My name is uh, Dr. John Kim. I'm with the National HIV Labs, which is part of the National Microbiology Lab, which is part of the Public Health Agency of uh, Canada. Uh, dry blood spot testing is a, a, a relatively new uh, method for testing. However, it's been with us for about 20 years. So essentially what it is, it's a, a novel way of collecting blood without having to use venipuncture. And what venipuncture is, is everybody's familiar with uh, the use of a needle and a tube. So one of the advantages of dry blood spot testing is that you do not need to have a nurse or somebody trained in uh, taking blood with a needle. It's essentially just uh, picking the end of your finger and then dropping it onto a special piece of paper uh, which is uh, known as the dry blood spot card. It has its origins in the 1960s with newborn uh, screening of uh, pediatrics. It's only been within the last maybe 15-20 years where the use of dry blood spot card collection uh, for infectious diseases with HIV being the, the poster child, for lack of a better word, being the, the, the main infectious disease in which uh, dry blood spot testing is, is starting to gain prominence. One of the advantages I can say uh, within the interventions in which we've used dry blood spot testing for diagnosis is that the individuals, we've heard anecdotally that the reason it's been more acceptable is because you do not get the test result right away as you would in the case of uh, rapid testing. It also has other advantages and as I said earlier is because quite often these remote communities don't have persons who are able to take blood you know, via the needle. So as the uh, reference lab for, uh, for uh, PHAC, we, we have used dry blood spot collection, uh, car testing, uh, and, and collection for all of its epi-surveillance studies. So this is looking at um, uh, HIV and hepatitis C in indigenous populations, uh, men having sex with men, injection drug users, and persons from endemic countries. We've used it for the past 15, 17 years, and to date we've tested thousands, if not tens of thousands. Recently, however, we have used dry blood spot uh, card collection and testing uh, in applying it to uh, diagnostic testing within First Nations communities. The, uh, the reason it's, it hasn't been broadly implemented is, in fact, dry blood spot card collecting and testing is it's mainly been a research tool. So it, it's, it, we have to perform validation on it. So it's not like a, an HIV test uh, that you would use for serology detection or viral load monitoring, where typically companies will actually validate that test, uh, have it uh, approved by Medical Devices Bureau of Health Canada. So it's been mainly a research tool, it's just that we've now taken it out of the realm of, of research into diagnostics. But as long as you, one shows proper validation, um, it, uh, I, I can't see why it, it can't be used in a diagnostic capacity. So it's the beginning of a good thing and we hope at some point in the future that companies who perform and sell these uh, uh, diagnostic tests, whether it be for serology or for molecular, we're na we'll now have uh, protocols for dry blood spot testing. We, we know it's a step in the right direction. We've had good response. We've already shown uh, good efficacy in the, in the two First Nation communities uh, in which it's been rolled out. We hope and suspect that as others uh, start to learn of this technique and some of the advantages uh, associated with dry blood spot testing versus the standard way of testing, which is either the needle or rapid testing, that uh, it will start to become part of the routine uh, way of testing for blood, in addition to the, the you know, the venipuncture, the, the needle method, as well as uh, rapid testing.